Welcome once again to Product One's technical web series, uh, more specifically Creo Generative Design Part Two. Uh, last week we showcased a video uh, whereby we went into great lengths in explaining what is generative design. For those of you who have missed uh, a little bit of that, so remember this is a way of autonomously generating the geometry based on a set of requirements and constraints. All right. So this is an AI or artificial intelligence way of creating components. So let's have a look at a scenario here. Let's say you're an engineer, you are tasked with uh, designing a seat bracket for this racing car. So all that you have now at the moment is the following. So this sub-assembly, it's made out of sheet metal components, as you can see there. And we know very well that a human imagination can only lead you so far. So this is made out of mat metal and it's bent up and of course certain cutouts for uh, weight saving, but also to cater for the, the bolts uh, and so forth. But then maybe the issue here is because this is a rally car that we design, there's too much vibration and this metal is either uh, bending over time or it's not strong enough or whatever the case is. So this is the brief that you're getting from a customer. The customer says, listen, I don't want this to be done utilizing sheet metal. I want this done out of, uh, be it casting, 3D printing, plastic, titanium or whatever it is. I do not want this to be sheet metal. So then you say, okay, fine, cool, fair enough. How about Mr. Customer, I do the following. I can generate this design that looks like this. And because this is emanating from uh, a sheet metal, this is the original shape that maybe I would have pitched to the customer because this is easier for me to do, right? I get this uh, laser cut, I bend it, and we probably weld this so that it can cater for the balls. Maybe the customer says, you know what? I don't care. I don't want anything done out of sheet metal in this particular instance. Then I say, okay, fine. How about I have this scenario whereby I have my preserved geometry, which is what I need to hook up the bolts and here at the bottom as well. Then I take this into my generative design environment. So just to save time, just like last time, you can see that there's now loads and constraints in this. The only caveat though, uh, between what we've done last week and today is here we've got what we call multiple scenarios because I don't know what material will suit uh, this condition. What manufacturing processes will be uh, conducive for this particular design? All right. So what I've done here is as you familiar now is you have your design criteria, you've got whatever the limit is, you can set up any design constraints in this and you get to select the material, right? Now, I've decided to say, how about I have the other option where I explore manufacturing, utilizing what you call the pool method. This is where you're having like your core and cavity type scenario or you're having some kind of a casting methodology you specify what is the draft angle because we all know that when you're having something like a mold you're going to need to be able to extract that component from the mold so you can actually specify that and i've chosen a different steel here all right and i have another option where i don't actually care about the manufacturing process for an example i just say that just grow this component incorporate these uh, existing geometries and this is the material given to me. So I've got two what we call subtractive manufacturing processes. This is where you're having a block of metal, you're utilizing a CNC milling uh, machine where it actually subtracts the, the geometry through a series of two parts giving you the complete product that you want. As you can see there, the materials are different from the previous scenario. And this is also another one where the material is different as well. 
And then last but not least, I have this one here whereby I've got things like your minimum radius. So even though this is not subtractive, I'm utilizing like your 3D printing uh, uh, method on this. And of course the material is slightly different. So now I can explore all those multiple scenarios, run the analysis almost every day, of course, without knowing how long each will take and save a copy, present the results and so forth. Alternatively, I can send this data onto the cloud. Of course, this will require you to have a username and password. If you are interested in this, please uh, do not forget to hit us on the comment section. So of course you can put in your email address and your password if you've got. This utilizes a series of, of credits. So if you've got credits onto this, you'll be able to generate multiple designs simultaneously. I'm going to pause the video a little bit so that I showcase a video version of this so that we can see how the system works. Now, uh, this is the web application. As you can see now, when you log in onto your workspace, you get to see those uh, design criteria that you uh, imported or sent into the cloud. All the limits, all the materials, and of course, you can interrogate these individually uh, and make sure that everything is always in order. Uh, but what is actually of paramount importance here is you get to see at the top there that you're going to have about 20 designs. And when you click on that, you've got this graphical overview of all these studies, all right? Each and every one of them, you get to see where they fit in, in terms of, let's say the mass distribution. Of course, you can modify what you need to look at here, because as you can see, the graphical representation is based on the maximum stress, which is uh, uh, in MPA, and of course, the mass, which is in kilograms. Now, you can view this and decide that, you know what, I like what I'm, I'm having uh, here, but I need a second opinion or whatever the case is. So let me share this with my colleagues. Of course, you can send now this uh, having a, an email address or whatever the case is. But then when you come back here, you can have a look at the version history of, of what you've got here. And you can say, how about we select one of the design or manufacturing criteria? Let's choose the one where we had nothing. So you get to see uh, here in terms of the material, what is the maximum displacement, for an example. You can visualize your results to say, this is the mess. And let's look at the design number two, for an example. Let's tweak the limits here uh, and so forth. So the idea behind this is even the represented, uh, presented designs or results, you can actually modify them uh, as you see fit. All right. So, but that's not what is uh, going to be of interest for us here. What is of interest is the following. We want to choose from the series of design criteria. We want to choose uh, utilizing with the limit, uh, the mass, the vermicis stress, or whatever the case is we can actually say, how about we select from this uh, maybe maximum displacement. Maybe that's what's important to us. And let's choose components that are within this particular range. What that means is the selected range there, it basically filters out all the components that conforms to a specific uh, let's say mess in this instance, uh, when you compare to the displacement. Then you can have a look at that and you get to see even the material thereof. You can even say, sort this by the lowest mess or whatever. Let's pick maybe the top three, top three in terms of the lowest mess in this instance. And I can say, how about I compare those? So those three designs, I'm actually now comparing those. So remember, I want to compare with something. So let's have a look at what is the von Mises stress on all of these. So 
I have now what you call the synchronous view where I can mo modify or manipulate the viewable and it actually changes on all three. Now, I can zoom in into the area of interest here to see which one will best serve me in this instance. And as you can see, I've got virtually no high flash points here as compared to these other two. So that means that at the moment, this design is looking like the way to go. Of course, there is multiple ways in which the, uh, you can have a look at uh, what will influence the final pick in this uh, instance. So let me send this now to Creo. So this will be saved into my Creo environment. So as I'm busy uh, generating this design over here, it gets sent into Creo. This is the component in question. I did not create this. The algorithm did that for me. So that means that instead of sitting by and exploring multiple options, I can let the system do this for me. And of course, I can now, just like before, and say, how about I generate a B rep of this particular design? So just like that, I'm going to create now a, a freeform surface of these results that is a for solid. Our, for our demonstration. As a solid, right? So now, as this is creating, I'm going to pause it. So. There it is. There's my B rep getting generated. And this is the product that I have been looking for. So now the one thing that's left is for me to go back into the subassembly and substitute this component that the customer is not looking to have with the brand new created part, which is this one. And just like that, I've got a component that is generated utilizing what we call generative design, right? So that essentially, it's a quick demonstration of how the 3D CAD solution Creo can help you accelerate innovation so you can build better products faster. It's easy to learn and it seamlessly takes from the earliest phases of your product to manufacturing and beyond, real-time simulation, additive manufacturing, and IoT, to iterate faster, reduce cost, and improve product quality. The world of product development moves very quickly, and only Creo delivers the transformative tools you need to build better products faster. And that is it for the generative design series. Until next time, goodbye.